so we had to define, you know, as I said, it's a nonlinear process. So early voxels here were built as we were still exploring, you know, structural types. And uh, so the cardboard ones and the plastic or, you know, polygal ones there, uh, those were done a long time earlier in the process before we ever got our script rolling and things like that. We were trying to investigate ways of making that structural shape off-site with a high degree of control and a high degree of flexibility. So we knew, um, I'll show you in the next slide. Actually. We can just, these are early examples. You can go to the next slide. Okay. Um, this gets into the rationalization of the voxels. So on the left, you see the doubly curved surface that represents the outside TSV, top of structural voxel surface, our design surface. So it's doubly curved and, and therefore, you know, there's no faceting. But with the voxel world, we had to rationalize the um, geometry, uh, you know, to accommodate the planar nature of the tops. And you'll see that you have this little slippage uh, in the lower right image where there's faceting. And so that just made us address those secondary systems, you know, the tile system differently because we couldn't use this as our outside shell and uh, express that. So uh, you can go to the next one. So this is that rationalization moment, taking the polygon top and bottom surface. The bottom surface was not generated as a straight uh, numerical offset. It was developed as a set of investigations underneath and we wanted to have a change in topography, a thickening, you know, as the shell moved out towards the edges it got thinner and different parts it was thicker to carry the airflow and then, you know, so there's different things driving the Z depth of our space between top side of voxel and bottom side of voxel. So it looks somewhat straight sided here but it was not and our output um, our model had an output, uh, you know, in an analysis format that we could look at and see, you know, the average sidewall dimension and the aggregate sidewall dimension. And so, anyhow, you can go to the next one. Is uh, so to get to get the faces to align from one to the other uh, from that simple geometry out outlay, you know, the beginning polygon. You have to um, average sidewalls and so Vish wrote from front wrote this script that you know cleaned out the corners so that there was a little bit of room uh, on the intersection to get a little tolerance and then he averaged the sidewalls you know trimmed out these nodes and then if you go to the next one he's um, you know come back with a sidewall that represents the um, you know the result of this little script and uh, in the end, you can go to the next one. Let's see. So, actually, one more I think is the full. Uh, well, actually, maybe maybe just just as a side note, I think it's this is where you're starting to show. You referred to this a couple times, but I think maybe this is one of the first moments where you show. You know, you've talked about this as sort of this this um, the structural system, but um, but here you're actually you know you're creating you know some holes in that system. Um, and so, what's interesting about that is, remind me again, how are you using these holes, or what is your, at this stage of the game, what is your intent on, on what, what they're for? And actually, you even have the ones at the bottom, the bottom surface here, um, where maybe something different happens down here. Can you talk through that? Yes. So the side holes were knocked out for two things. One, three actually. We started saying, let's have some ability to pull th systems through, you know, whether it was a high velocity air system or whether it was electrical or whether, you know, some plumbing and we wanted to, uh, lighting systems, things like that, we wanted to accommodate them so we, we always had this notion of some knockouts but then with the thickness of the shell being adequate enough, deep enough, we thought about using the shell itself because essentially it's just a sheet metal box like a duct so we went through our, went to our structural, or pardon me, mechanical engineer and said, you know, give us our averages of um, duct size left and right and we'll be highly inefficient in our duct, you know, because these openings are so much smaller than the panel that they're sitting in. So there's a loss of efficiency and we got to worry about noise and things like this. So we, we would 
go with a low pressure, you know, and just let the air eat through these holes. And then, of course, we're introducing changes to the uh, internal temperature, so we've got to start thinking about the insulation system in relation to that and back to our primary material, you know, are we using aluminum, which may oxidize, are we going to use stainless, and what are the weight differences, and all of these are kind of pumping back and forth at the same time. We always had a knockout on the bottom simply because workability in, we always thought that these things would be riveted together um, at least into m aggregates like you see in this particular image, maybe five to seven minimum, right, in the, in the shop, and then brought out to the site and then banged together there, and then you see in the next slide that we had shards, as we were calling them, much bigger chunks, uh, actually one more down goes to there. So the different colored, you know, sides of the bridge image, yes, exactly. Those guys represent um, where we were considering assembling these, trucking them out. That's all based on the truck width and the road, and we have a lot of issues on the road up in this site. So we had gone through it in previous, in the previous project with the jumbo glass, which was 22 feet crates, you know. So we had a sense of what we could get up into the site and pick into um, into location. So they were going to be riveted. You can go back to the one with the holes in it if you would. Yeah. So they are going to be riveted together, even if it was just to hold them as a staging, get them into place, and then tack weld as your kind of added extra strength. And we in the latter um, structural design ended up. Uh, conceding that we had to do at least the top side layer, um, you know, tack welded each two per edge, you know, so we're going to have these things come out riveted together and then once it's fully formed on site and ratcheted down into shape, you know, it's going to have tack welding on the outside. So. Okay, so you're using th these holes for uh, access down here, maybe lights sometime in the future, or you weren't sure, you just, and then, you know, certainly for you know, for, for, you know, HVAC and so forth, you know. Side, yeah, sidewalls for systems and bottom for assembly, basically. And then because you have the hole in the bottom, then you can use that for secondary systems of sure. light or air.